Hi, and thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to talk to you about dashboarding with Google Data Studio and kind of talk a bit about how your analyst is secretly a user experience designer when they're building reports for you. So before we go on, who am I? I just want to kind of introduce myself. I'm David. Nice to meet you. Um, fun fact, I'm six foot eight, uh, just over two meters tall. So uh, when this photo got made, uh, the photographer had to stand on a ladder. So a little fun fact there. Uh, equally, I'm very passionate about data and data visualization, so much so that I've set up my own website dedicated to the topic, where I explore and try and find new ways to visualize data and tell data-driven stories. Okay, so let's get on with the presentation. So first off, analyst reporting, what's the problem? You kind of ask yourself, because that's what they're meant to do. But um, what I'd say, and I challenge that, um, and we'll see coming up in a few slides, that shouldn't be the main thing they're focusing on. They should kind of have this down pat and then focus on actually finding insights and generating dashboards which are right for the business and you. So, you know, to put that into context, I've got a little video here uh, which talks about that. I won't run through it now. Click on this link to check it out. But essentially, it talks about how your analysts shouldn't spend all their time cutting and pasting data, updating spreadsheets, emailing out multiple versions every week. You know, that time could be better spent being an analyst and actually you know, finding those insights. So go check that out. It's only about a minute long and it helps convey the point. And I call them data monkeys. You know, that those kind of actions are being a data monkey. And you know, you're paying your analysts good money and you don't want them to do all this data monkey work. They should be you know, realizing their full potential for you and your business. So let's role play. Let's put it into perspectives, you know, rather than just talk theory. So I live in Singapore right now and let's set the scene. So in Singapore, there's lots of haze and typically it occurs around about these times and it gets really bad. There's you know, smoke from other countries coming in when they backburn their crops and it's not ideal. You know, it's not very healthy to breathe this in and it's, you don't get to see the beautiful views of Singapore. In the same vein, mask sales, like breathing mask sales skyrocket, and especially this model. And uh, you know, it makes sense because you know, you you've got to still go outside, you've got to breathe. So naturally you want a product to help you do that. So let's just say you're a retailer in this situation and uh, you, know, you want to use all the data available to you in the real world and your sales data to you know, maximize your sales and revenue. It also helps Singaporeans find the best protection they can from the haze. So how do we do that? Now, you probably have a bit of a think to yourself and there's many different data sources you could kind of access to. And we're going to see how we can connect them all. But, you know, we've got this uh, Hayes data from the Singapore government, Twitter data from their API, AdWords data, which is like your search marketing spend, advertising spend, Google Analytics, which is like your website traffic data kind of analysis stuff, and stock levels, which you've just put in a Google sheet, just kind of like Excel, but online. Uh, so you monitor your stock levels of your mask. Um, that's all very well and good, but right now you've probably got all these data feeds and they're coming in separately, you know, very hard to see, they're very disjointed, they might come in at different frequencies and different formats and it's hard to find the insights between them. And equally, again, you're wasting a lot of your analyst time generating these manually and being a data monkey. There is a better way. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show you an example of Data Studio. There are other tools and solutions which can do this, but I want to focus on Data Studio today because it's pretty new and it's you know, pretty accessible and easy to use. So I want to kind of guide you through that one. Um, so essentially, you know, setting up all your data sources, you can kind of connect them in very easily. And, you know, as they automatically update, Data Studio will be able to handle that and be as fresh as your data is. Um, you know, we've got all these native connectors, which is great. Uh, they get adding more and more all the time. Uh, and, you know, for now we've got ours here. And yeah, you basically put them all into one, they go into Data Studio and you can start spinning out reports which people can get access to. Uh, you know, you build the dashboards which work for you and it's very easy to share and collaborate. The functionality is very much like Google Drive where you can control who views and edits stuff. Um, you know, so it's pretty simple but equally protects your data and your information. It's easy to iterate and update your work. Everyone has like one URL. There's no need to have multiple versions of Excel flying around anymore, which is kind of good. And yeah, just one URL. So everyone's off the same page, no confusion. Okay, so that's the problem solved, right? Easy, got all the data, slam it into a chart. You know, that's brilliant. But I think the biggest problem is you've got to figure out what you want to put into your dashboards and how do you build this holistic view? 
And um, because just because you can put data in doesn't mean you should. So you can come up with these horrible little dashboards which look pretty, or we think they look pretty, but they're not actually adding anything. So the challenge here is to kind of figure out what you need as a company and as a user, and this is what your analyst should be doing. But the great news is Data Studio kind of overcomes all that and um, makes that part easy because they don't have to worry about getting the data in, editing it, changing the views, distributing. They can now focus on being a UX designer, even if they didn't realize they were doing this. And I had this revelation a couple of, you know, a job ago, and it was brilliant. Um, you know, you can hear more about this journey on this video here. Um, but basically I realized, wow, I'm in this trusted position where I know how to build things. I understand my audience and it's my job to get the right information in front of the right people and, you know, align to their KPIs and align to the business needs, which is really exciting. So you've got to start designing your dashboards for your end users, you know, establishing KPIs, you know, what's your business trying to solve. And you, again, you're going to adapt. Your business isn't going to stay static. So how do you adapt and change and get that feedback? And how do you see how your users use the data and how do you use the dashboard? You've got to be receptive to this and responsive and, you know, change things accordingly and collect that feedback and update as you need. But again, it's really easy and it makes you, allows you to just focus on that stuff rather than having to worry about maintaining all this. You can just focus on updating, getting feedback and iterating because you know that everyone's pointing at that one link and when you make a change, it updates and we'll see that coming up. So let's put this into practice. It's all very well and good talking about this stuff, but let's actually do something with it. Okay, so let's just set the scene with that retailer who sells masks. So go back in time, 2014, and you know, we've started using the product. Um, and look, we put in some sales data from our Google Analytics accounts. We see the unit sold, revenue, it updates daily, great. And you know, oh cool, sales went up. This is brilliant, what happened? You know, was it my advertising? You know, it's hazy, that might just be the case, but the advertising might work, right? Let's have a look, let's add that in. And when we add it in, ah, we quickly see there's a problem. And I'll just quickly explain what this means. So if your impression share, which means how, many, how much coverage you have on all the types of queries people are searching for, for the keywords you want. So in this case, we'd be caring about haze, masks, protective masks, breathing stuff, that kind of thing. We can now suddenly see because the number of terms shot up, we're not advertising on every single one, which means we're potentially not driving people to our website to better find the great product. Other people, they're going to other places or nothing at all. So that's a bit of an issue. But as soon as we saw this, you know, we were aware of it, we knew what to do and we could fix that. So we you know, increased our ad spend, you know, we got more competitive, we had better coverage. And as a result, our sales went up. But the problem is we could have capitalized on that way sooner if we'd seen this. But now it's built into the dashboard when it happens again, you know, a few, within a few days or a day, we can quickly act on that and change it. So you can quickly see by the sheer fact of just having something visible, it changes how you're more responsive and can maximize the revenue or capitalize on the benefits of, of seeing that trend. Okay, so now in 2015, we're prepared, right? Nothing's gonna, you know, nothing's gonna trip us up now. So, you know, we're all ready with the advertising, but then suddenly, bam, the haze started early. And look, great, sales went up, and within a day or two, our low impression share shot back up, a bit more competitive because there's way more queries now. People really, really want their masks because they were unprepared for it and it started soon. And okay, so that's, you know, great. We've, you know, advertising's done. We're gonna make all this money because we've capitalized on that. But suddenly, uh, we've lost all this revenue. It's, we've suddenly stopped selling. What's going on? You know, why is this happening? This can't be good. And my advertising's still running, but I'm not selling anything. And what, you know, have I run out of stock? Okay, let's add in the stock data for my Google Sheets. And oh, wow, yes, we have. And we can quickly see because of the sooner than expected results and the increased demand and our more effective advertising, our sales of stock have like shot up. So our stock's like gone way down and now we've run out and we weren't predicting that. You know, but again, you could argue if we'd seen this coming, we could have increased our stock orders beforehand and not gotten this situation. But as soon as we've seen it, we've rectified it, we've ordered more, we've ramped up how much we've ordered um, and we start selling again, that's lovely. But you know, we've missed out this week's worth of revenue we could have made. And again, week's worth of supplying Singaporeans with you know, the masks they need. So you can see how we keep adding to this view and it becomes more and more relevant. Okay, so not great, but we're moving into 2016 now. 
And um, look, we've got too much stock. We ordered too much over here. Um, it shot up because we, uh, we were trying to backfill too much from the 2015 era. Um, so we, we've got to kind of have an early warning system because the haze caught us by surprise last year. So it took us a while to kind of get back on top. So we're going to add in these early warning systems, looking at the government haze kind of metric, which is what they used to define how hazy it is. And we're also going to look at Twitter, social media, and figure out when people are tweeting about haze and kind of get an early warning system. I mean, you could look out the window, but, you know, that's, that's besides the point. Uh, so, you know, we're going to do this live and I'm going to get a friend to help me. So it's going to, you know, and as with anything, there's a live demo involved, so something could go wrong, but let's give it a go. So let's click on here. We'll open up the report. And you can see it's just a URL. So it's very easy to share. There's no multiple versions of the same spreadsheet being shared around. Just one thing everyone has access to or who you want to have access to. So now we're in, we can see the view we've already built. Very nice, very lovely. So I'm gonna get my friend to come in and help us. So I'm gonna click on share, I'm gonna type in the email address. And you can see it's very easy. It's just like Google Drive. You control who views and can edit things. And that applies to the data source as well. So you have complete protection over who sees what. So we're just going to share that with them. So they should get an email very, very shortly. And they're uh, just going to click on it and they'll be in. Okay, so they're in now, which is great. We can see them here. It's very easy to see who's collaborating with a document. So I've asked them to add the Twitter data. So I'm going to go into edit mode and add my data too for the uh, Hayes data from the Singapore government. So to do that, I'm just going to click on a little time series here. Let's drag it in. I've already kind of pre-populated the data, so this should be pretty easy, but Data Studio has a great function to add in the right, or have a, have a guess at what it's trying to show. So right now it's already predicted the right kind of PM.2.5 uh, index, but I'm gonna add in the forecast stuff too. Uh, and it's easy as a quick click. I don't like the colors, and neither did my friends, so they've changed the lines to yellow, very easy, straightforward. And notice how we're collaborating on the same document at the same time without overwriting each other's stuff. You know, really awesome, right? That means we can kind of just both work on things and get the same results in the same chart and dashboard without having to overwrite each other and mess around and do different versions back and forth. And that's it. You know, we've just quickly collaborated. We've added two things that would have taken twice as long. You know, just imagine with more complex data sets. We've just done it at the same time, very quick. And, you know, if I want to edit their chart, I can just quickly play around, tweak some of the formatting, and it's that easy. And lastly, you know, if I want to share it with my boss, I can quickly go edit or get out of edit mode, share. And if I just want them to view it, I just give them that link. And, uh, you know, it's that easy. They only have the view access, but my friend here has the edit access. So again, you're complete control over who sees what with regards to the dashboard and the data. Okay, so after we've finished editing all this stuff, we're gonna just kind of come out of edit mode. We're gonna go full screen. And I just kind of wanna show you a cool bit of functionality. So remember, we've got five different data sources here, all you know, coming from different data sources. And I've put a date control in here already. So very easily, you can quickly change the range you want to look at. You can either do a fixed date range and hit apply, or you know you can set a rolling one, but you're empowering your users to look at what they need to see. So maybe we just want to look at the uh, last quarter and we just do that. So basically you don't have to show everything, you can show what they need to see and go from there. But one date filter is controlling all of these. So it's easy and quick. And also, you know, if you don't want this one to update, it's very easy to control in the dashboard. Okay, so we've just added those and you can quickly see how we've got all the right metrics now. We're armed with an amazing dashboard. We're never going to get kind of get caught short in the future because we have our stock level, our advertising effectiveness, how much revenue we're making, how many units we're selling, a bit of a forecast on the haze and listening to Twitter to see you know, when it's kicking in and what people's sentiment are, which is kind of cool. Um, so you go take a step back. We have five different data sources. They're all automatically updating. We have one date control for everything, which is pretty awesome. You click on that and these will all update. We now have to share this via just one URL. There's no need to have five different spreadsheets. They're you know, not arriving at different times and they're manually updated and your analyst being a data monkey. It's all very secure. You can control who sees the report, as I've said a few times. It's just like Google Drive. Different people view and edit things and that's the data. It's protected. 
and you control exactly who sees what. There's more. I mean, obviously you can add third-party data sources like we already added Twitter. There is a GA blog post, Google Analytics blog post, which you can click on here or in the description below. And um, essentially, you know, you can add Bing data, Facebook data. Uh, you go back into GA and add demographic data, you know, like country, gender, age, traffic source, that kind of stuff. So there's so much more you can add. And it, it's up to you really. But the important thing is to make sure you're adding the right data and it's being seen by the right people at the right time in the right place. Otherwise it's kind of all a bit pretty and pointless. So in summary, we've seen how kind of automating a report allows your analysts to analyze. You know, again, they're not focusing on shoveling data to you. They can actually get those views built, make sure they're relevant and helpful and actually focus on analyzing and giving you extra insights on top of that. You're being more responsive to your markets. You know, your data is coming in the right way, in the right format, all at once. So you can see how they all correlate and interact with each other. And then you can make the best informed decisions for your business in the market. You know, it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be hard. I think that's the key thing. You've seen here, even with that live demo, the way we kind of added in the data sources, built the views, drags and drops, getting your colleagues to help. You, we've seen that it doesn't have to be super expensive. You don't have to get an army of consultants in. And equally, you don't have to have like an army of engineers who know like tons of database coding and stuff like that. You know, anyone can do this as long as your data is accessible and pretty straightforward to manage, which, you know, most companies it is. It's just still tricky to get at. So how cool is that, right? You're now armed to build out your own dashboards exactly how you want or empower your analysts to without huge overhead or time commitments. And you can just have fun bringing your company's data together to really just make sure your business thrives and is the most reactive it can be and have an edge over your competition. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, reach out to me at my website or on Twitter.